So our next speaker is, uh, sorry. He was the Oguri from Caltech who will speak about world sheet derivation of large and duality. Thank you. Well, uh, were you able to listen to me so far? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, then, uh, it is useful to draw a Feynman diagram as ribbon graph like this, uh, where each propagator is expressed as a pair of lines, and each line carries an index running from 1 to n. So in this case, it is clear that each loop carries a factor of n. Now, the idea is this, that if I fill each loop of the ribbon graph by a disk, like this, then each graph is turned into a closed Riemann surface, and the dependence of the graph on G and mirrors and N is then expressed as in this formula, the G and mirrors to 2G to 2G minus 2, and G and mirrors squared to times N to the power of H, where G is a genus of the surface obtained in this way, and H is a number of the loops in the original diagram. The full perturbation uh, theory amplitude is then expressed as a sum of a genus of G closed Riemann surface, where each term f of g depends on the two-fifth coupling. The conjecture then is this, that there is a closed string theory whose g loop amplitude is given by f of g. Uh, in this case, a two-fifth coupling t is some parameter of the wall sheet theory, and in known examples, it is typically a geometric modulus of the, gate, uh, of the target space. In string theory, variety of gauge theory can be realized as low energy eff effective theory of open string on D brains. <coughs> Ribbon graph of these gauge theory have natural interpretation as describing open string world sheets ending on the D brains. In this context, the two foot conjecture has a natural generalization about the conjecture between D brains and closed string background. <coughs> Let me explain what I mean. Consider this open string diagram with fixed number of handles and holes. It is weighted by the factor lambda, lambda is a string coupling constant, to 2g minus 2 and n lambda to the h, where the factor n here comes from the Champato factor for each hole. If we take the low energy limit of this, we obtain the gauge theory amplitude for the corresponding ribbon graph. But this is simply a kinematical fact about low energy limit and has nothing to do with the conjecture by itself. In fact, we may choose not to take the low energy limit and we can still make a conjecture. The conjecture is that after summing over a number of holes here for a fixed number of handles G, we obtain G loop cross string amplitude. On this closed string side, the two-foot coupling T is some parameter of the closed string background. So, as I have written here, we can make a more general conjecture about the equivalence between D brains and closed string background, and it is in this context that I'd like to prove the large-end duality. 
Of course, if we take the low energy limit of the open string side here, and I take the corresponding limit of the closed string side, this generalizes the, con this generalizes the conjecture, reduces to the traditional conjecture about the large end duality. Now, by now, several examples of large end duality have been discovered, assuming various end theory dualities and the equivalence between D brains and closed string background. <coughs> the ADA CFT correspondence is a well-known example of this. Now, another interesting class of duality is the equivalence between topological open string and topological closed string, which I call here topological string dualities. The first type of topological string duality discovered by Gopakuma and Buffer states that the Chan-Simon gauge theory in three dimension is equivalent to topological closed string with a twist on the Calabria threefold. In the spirit of the previous transparency, the Chan-Simon gauge theory can be kinematically obtained from topological open string on A-type D-brain wrapping on a deformed Calabial singularity. And this was shown by Witten. On the other hand, the corresponding closed string is living on a small resolution of the same Calabial singularity. So the equivalence is between open string on D-brains on the deformed Calabial singularity and closed string on the resolved Calabria. Very recently, the mirror version of this duality was investigated by Digraph and Waffer. Here, the topological string in question is of the B type, and the role of the deformed Calabria and resolved Calabria are exchanged. Namely, it is an equivalence between open string on D brains on the resolved Calabria and closed string on the deformed Calabria. In the closed string, the closed string in this case is known as the Kodaira Spencer theory of gravity. One of the amazing things about this is the open string side gives a matrix model of the type studied in the context of C less than one string theory in the early 1990s, but we do not have to take the double scaling limit in order to have the nice closed string interpretation. And I think Robert Digraf will tell you more about it. These conjectures have been derived assuming that M theory exists as a mathematical framework to work together with all the dualities. But there is nothing wrong with it, of course. And if you are satisfied with this as a proof of the large end conjecture, then I can finish my talk here and we can all go to lunch now. <laughs> but I think it would be nice uh, if we can actually prove that M theory exists and that D brains and closed strings backgrounds are equivalent etc. And today I'd like to present a proof of the topological string duality without appealing to the M-theory duality. And I hope that the proof will teach us how to go about proving the more general conjecture about the D-brains. <coughs> now let me give a more precise statement of the conjecture. Consider the chan simon theory on three sphere with gauge group UN. The parameter K in front of the action is called the level, and the gauge coupling constant is given in terms of K and N by this formula. The conjecture, once again, is that large end version, uh, uh, large end expansion of this gauge series gives a topological closed string with A twist defined on the conifold geometry. The string coupling constant is the square of the gauge coupling constant given by this formula. And the two coupling T is related to the amount of NSNS2 form on the small two sphere of the conifold. The conifold is a singular space, but the string theory on it is well defined, it, defined provided that T is non-zero. It was pointed out by Buffer that this conjecture has a natural interpretation in the context of M theory. It has been shown in my paper with Bershowski, Chekoti, and Buffer that the Chan-Simon theory, gauge theory, can be used to compute certain low energy effective theory terms on D6 plane, wrapping on S3 and extending <coughs> in R4. On the other hand, the corresponding term in type two string on conifold with Ramon Ramon flux can be computed using the topological closed string theory. Therefore, the conjecture here can be proven if we can demonstrate that the closed string configurations here and here are related to each other. 
And in fact, it was subsequently shown by Atiyah, Mardasena, and Waffa that these superstring configurations are indeed smoothly interpolated from one to the other by uplifting these configurations to M theory or manifold with G2 holonomies. So if you believe the M theory duality, then this would be the proof of the conjecture. But as I said, the conjecture can be stated in each order in string perturbation theory as a sum over holes of open string diagram with the fixed number of handle G gives a G loop closed string amplitude. So it should be possible to give a direct word sheet proof of this conjecture. And this is what I'd like to do in the rest of my talk. So here is a proof. The idea is to start with a closed string side and study the limit which corresponds to the small to hoofed coupling, T. We want to see that closed string computation give rise to a sum over Feynman diagrams of the gauge theory. And to do so, however, we need a good description of world sheet when t is small. As I mentioned, it is a singular limit. t goes to zero is a singular limit in the closed string background. And to clarify the nature of the singularity, we will use the linear sigma model method developed by Witten. The linear sigma model in this case contains one vector multiplet V and four chiral multiplet A1, A2, and B1, B2. We have the potential given by this formula. Can you see this? And uh, where sigma is a complex scalar field in the vector multiplet V, and small a and small b are the chiral multiplets, a scalar field in the chiral multiplets. E here is the electric charge carried by these chiral multiplet fields. In the infrared limit, remember E has a dimensional mass in two dimensions, so E goes to infinity in, uh, in the infrared, and the theory flows to the nonlinear sigma model on the conifold. In this descrip description, the parameter t appears as a theta term for the vector multiplet field on the world sheet. Well, to be precise, uh, this is actually for Afishina, the people who know things, <laughs> that it is known that there are two decoupled conformal field series which arise in the infrared limit of the linear sigma model. We are interested in the so-called the Higgs branch theory. When t is not equal to zero, the Higgs branch theory flows to the sigma model on the conifold. As I mentioned, this sigma model becomes singular when t, t goes to zero. The linear sigma model description tells us exactly what happens in that limit, and here is what happens. Here is what happens in t, when t goes to zero. As we can see from this form of the potential, we can either have sigma equals zero and A and B non-zero, or sigma is non-zero and A and B are equal to zero. These are the two possibilities for the ground state of the potential. And correspondingly here we have the two possibilities. If A and B are non-zero, the gauge theory for the vector multiplet is spontaneously broken, and we call this as the H phase. And the target space of this phase is a conifold geometry, and it, in fact it flows to the smooth part of the conifold geometry. If on the other hand, the gauge symmetry is restored in the C phase where sigma can be non-zero, but A and B are set equal to zero. Since the field we carry in ch charge are all set equal to zero, so you have the symmetry restored. Now, however, there is one important point. If T is not equal to zero, this theta term here gives rise to a constant electric field in two dimensions, and therefore generate a non-zero vacuum energy in this C phase. So there is an energy gap between these two phases when t is non-zero. However, in the limit when t goes to zero, the vacuum energy of the phase C phase becomes degenerate with that of the H phase, so the both phases coexist on the world sheet. So the linear sigma de description tells us the singularity at t equals zero is due to this emergence of this new phase here, which does not have the interpretation of the geometry of conifold. It's something new. And it was suggested, in fact, by Gopakuma and Buffer that the topological string duality can be proven by regarding this new phase as a holes on the world sheet. Now, we are going to quantify this suggestion. Now, so here is what I'm going to do. We have this infinite dimensional space where we are going to do the functional integral over sigma. 
And then we are going to decompose them into sum over subspaces. And I'm going to show you that each of which give rise to a particular Feynman diagram of the gauge theory. Now, this sounds like a tall order, but it is possible. Now, more specifically, what I'm going to do is for each configuration of the sigma field, we separate the world sheet into two phases, C and H phases, depending on whether the absolute value of the sigma field is greater, greater or less than this fixed uh, cutoff value sigma star. If sigma is greater than sigma star, we call the region C phase. So this is a more precise definition of the C phase. And if it is less than sigma star, we call this as a H phase. We can then turn the part of the functional integral into a sum over sizes and the shapes of this C domain. And so you can see that these size and shapes of the C domains are kind of a collective coordinate of this sigma field. And as I, going, as I said earlier, we are going to identify the C phase as holes on the world sheet. But there are a few things we have to do, and these are the two important things uh, I'm going to demonstrate for you. One is that every C domain has to have the topology of a disk. Namely, if C domain has a configuration like this, or like this, so remember these yellow parts are the C domains that I'm going to regard as holes, then the contribution from this has to vanish on the topological string amplitude. This is necessary because if you remember my first transparency, the Tufuft coupling assumes that each hole is filled by disk. So these should not contribute. We also want to show that given that only disk contribute, that each disk in C phase contributes a factor of T, the Tufuft coupling, in order to reproduce the correct counting of the, uh, according to Tufuft. So I'm going to demonstrate that in the next two transparencies. Now, our task is simplified by the localization property of the functional integral over sigma. The statement is this, that because of the topological twisting, the functional integral of, over sigma on a fixed smooth Riemann surface is reduced to a finite dimensional integral over just constant mode of sigma. That's what the localization means. But this is very interesting. This means that the world sheet is actually either in entirely in pure C phase or in the H phase because sigma is constant. There is no phase boundary. So namely, the C and H phases do not coexist. Well, this already sounds like a problem for an, our scenario because we are assuming that world sheet is divided into various phases. However, there is an important assumption in this localization argument. That is that it assumes that world sheet is fixed and smooth. In fact, it was pointed out by Witten and clarified further in my paper with Bershowski, Chekoti, and Buffer that the situation is different for topological string because we have to integrate over the modularized space of Riemann surfaces. And so as we approach the boundary of the modularized space, the wall sheet may, may develop a long cylinder like the one that I have drawn here which becomes infinite at the boundary of the modularized space. In this case, the sigma can be non-constant along the long direction of the cylinder without costing too much uh, action. And so the localization uh, argument is evaded only in this case. Well, the localization argument still applies to the short angular direction along the, uh, across the cylinder. So we have sigma changing only along this long direction on the cylinder. So what we have accomplished is that we have reduced this computation to one-dimensional quantum mechanics along the cylinder. And this gives us a significant simplification. In this setup, in fact, we can identify the corrective coordinate of sigma exactly and make the, carry out the change of functional integral variables exactly. The functional integral of sigma on the boundary between H and C domains can be transformed into the integral over the location Y0 of the boundary of the two phases, and the phase, the phase meaning not, not in the sense of these two phases, but uh, the, the, the phase in the sense of the complex value of sigma naught. And these are the uh, corrective coordinate of this phase boundary. And so we have to carry out the change of this functional integral variable from the value of sigma near here to these two variables. And this can be carried out exactly. Now what happens is that location y naught here 
becomes a part of the moduli of the open string wall sheet. Remember, what we want to accomplish is that this closed string uh, computation give rise to the open string amplitude on D brain. So we have to correctly identify the open string moduli. And why not is going to give you part of the whole open string moduli. And moreover, we have verified, although I'm not going to sh show you here, that the correct measure for the open string moduli space is reproduced in this way by appropriately doing the change of the functional integral variable. Now, we still have this phase for the sigma naught to be integrated over. Now, the integral over uh, the phase of sigma can be expressed as a contour integral over the complex sigma plane. And the integrand, we have this f function here. This is the topological amplitude of the C domain with the Dirichlet boundary condition for sigma that it is equal to sigma naught on the boundary. Well, as I remember, I'm saying that uh, there is a localization along this angular direction on the cylinder, so sigma stays constant around here. So if we say that where well, there is a phase boundary, actually we have a Dirichlet boundary condition for the C phase here. And you can compute the topological string amplitude for it, substitute this into this term you are acting this derivative and integrate, that gives a contribution from each C domain. The derivative here comes from the precise computation of the Jacobian factor for this change of the variable. Now, the remaining task is to compute this topological string amplitude on the C domain and the contribution from it. The first thing to note is that because of the topological symmetry, F is actually a holomorphic function of the sigma naught, the boundary value of the sigma field. And you can show this by using topological BRST symmetry. So this means that if F is a single valued function of sigma naught, then this contour integral actually vanishes because you are taking derivative of holomorphic function and then integrating it and coming back to the same point. So this is actually the difference, difference of the value of this function at the beginning and at the end of this contour. So if f is single valued, actually this vanishes. And it's very easy to show that this is the case when C domain has a handle, or two, or three, or more than one boundaries. In those cases, because of this property, the contribution vanishes, because these give rise to a single valued function of sigma naught. Therefore, this is a very simple one-line proof the C domain in such a conf configuration do not contribute at all to topological string amplitude. And this is precisely, of course, what is required for the Tofuft coupling, counting. Now, then it is clear that only non-zero contribution can, if there is any, come from the C domain on the disk. Since the disk amplitude is actually ambiguous unless we fix three points on the boundary, as string theory tells you, so the disk amplitude itself actually can be ambiguous and may have monodromy as we go around the sigma naught plane. And this is exactly what happens. We can compute this monodromy of the disk amplitude exactly using this localization formula, as I mentioned before. And this is the exact computation. And uh, this is basic, uh, the, and then, then if you do the contour integral, you get exactly T, the two hoofed coupling. So we have shown that the closed string amplitude is expressed as a sum over holes of open string amplitude, and each hole has the topology of the disk and contributes a factor of t. And this is what we wanted to show. Now, this completes the proof. However, there is one more thing I need to tell you. That is that uh, there is a possibility that the entire world sheet in the, in the pure C phase, like this, from the point of view of gauge theory, this is a very peculiar situation, since we are saying that entire wall sheet is a hole. Now, there is no Feynman diagram corresponding to such wall sheet. In fact, we can compute this amplitude exactly, and we find this result, which is singular for small to hoofed coupling. So 2G minus 2 is positive, so this is singular. And this, again, is peculiar from the point of view of to hoofed expansion, since it assumes that we can expand gauge theory amplitude in positive power of t, and we are getting this divergent result. From the point of view of closed string, however, this is quite natural since the target space becomes singular when t goes to zero, as I have been said a couple of times. And the pure phase is basically capturing the singular behavior of the world sheet. 
Well, now, to understand what this term means in the gauge theory, we can try to sum this over all genera. Now, here, chi, I didn't tell you, but it's a Euler characteristic of the moduli space of Riemann surface, which is expressed in terms of the Bernoulli number. Important thing is that you have this factor 2g minus 2 here, but then you are multiplying this to sum over, and then you see that gauge coupling constant cancels from denominator and numerator. And in fact, this term depends only on n. And in fact, you can carry out this summation using the Binet integral. And we find that this is equal to the log of the volume of un. This is the famous McDonald's formula for the volume of the uh, group un, which comes from the fact that actually un is a product of, uh, homotopically product of these uh, spheres. We can then identify the major factor of the chan simon functional integral the factor is not included in the standard Tofut expansion, but it is there in the exact gauge theory amplitude. So this means that the duality between the gauge theory and the string theory goes beyond the Tofut expansion. Now, I still have the yellow light here, so I'm just going to show you one more transparency where the same thing can be done for uh, this case with Orientifold. Actually, after computing this, uh, we are looking for the formula for the uh, Euler characteristic of a surface with cross cap, and uh, we find that it was actually found by mathematician just last year, which is too bad, because if we didn't know that, we would have predicted those numbers from this answer. So anyway, with this note, I conclude my talk. Thank you for your attention. Other questions or comments? Uh, this is very vague, but there's something I find confusing, which is that um, to really see the open strings come out, the important part of the Feynman diagram is where the open strings are long. Yes. Uh, that's where you really see field theory, and you're trying to see churn simons field theory. On the other hand, in your derivation, the part where your derivation is convincing is where the tube that connects to the sigma domain is long. Indeed. And oh, there that's seems to be, the, that's if I could just finish for the sake of everyone else who doesn't know what I'm trying to say, th there seems to be a conflict between one being long and the other one being long. I, I realize that. I, uh, that's a very interesting point. And uh, probably we are saved by the fact that we are doing the topological string computation. And as far as the disk is concerned, the, the, the perimeter of disk is not really the moduli of the Riemann surface. But that's, uh, that actually is, is indeed, uh, I realize, is a puzzle. And uh, on the other hand, I would like to point out that we did show that we can reproduce all the open string world sheet moduli by doing this change of variable. So it does look like this is small, but it is not really so. Oh, yeah, so here is, here is this thing. So here is an answer to you. <laughs> so I believe. So that is that. So, so, so you, you, you want to look at the limit when the moduli along the, di, the, uh, the, the one of the disks is very large. But in, that, in fact, that is transformed from y. Because basically, y gives you the size of the disk. So for the moduli is, uh, the, so if you add a uh, hole on each world sheet, what are the additional three moduli that you need? The location of the hole and the, the, the size of the hole, which is actually this y. And we found that this gives rise to the correct measure. Yes, in this picture, it does look like this is uh, small, but I believe this is somehow related by modular transformation on the world sheet to, to the case that you desire. <coughs> Namely, that large y, probably large circle here, would probably correspond to y goes into this direction. But we, I have to think a little bit more carefully in order to make this precise. Uh, is there any analog in QCD of terms singular in the Toft coupling? In the case of QCD? Yeah, or some other gauge yeah, so theory. In the case of ADS-CFT correspondence, which actually is what I'm currently looking into, the, the thing is that it's typically the case that small to fifth coupling is singular limit in the closed string in terms of the target space geometry. In the case of ADS-5-CFT4 correspondence, uh, the, the two-fifth coupling of n equal four gauge theory is related to the curvature radius of ADS5 and the radius of S5. So you would be, if, in order to reproduce the uh, two-fifth expansion, you should be looking at the limit as actually Polyakov was also saying, 
the limit when the radius of S3 becomes small. So you have a very situation where the target space curvature is very large, and you have a very uh, singular situation of the sigma model. So typically, when quantum field theory, in, the case, in this case, wall sheet quantum field theory has a singularity, one way to cure it or clarify it is to realize that maybe this is signaling a new degrees of freedom. In, in fact, uh, in this case, the new degree of freedom is this new phase C that is appearing. You do this computation in quantum field theory and you find some singularity in some body of the parameter. The reason is sometimes that you are missing some new degrees of freedom. This, another conifold transition of Strominger is another example. So, so in this case, it works in such a way that adding this, introducing this new degree of freedom to cure the singularity exactly did the right job in creating the hole on the world sheet. And so what I'm currently looking into with camera buffer is to see whether something like that is also realized for string on ADS5 cross S5. I guess I was asking if anything was known on the field theory side. I in mean, if you just compute, say, partition function of a gauge theory on uh, whether there, I mean, I'm. You mean, uh, field theory side, you mean the CFT side? Yes, not well, or in not. In which case, I mean, uh, the, the answer we want to desire is clear that we want to reproduce the sum of Feynman diagrams. Okay, thank you. Uh, related maybe to the last question, what's the end dependence of these effects again? Can you yes, well, this, the counting may be slightly different from what you are familiar with. But uh, basically, we have g m mills and the g m mills square and times n. And I'm identifying the g m mills square as the string coupling constant, cross string coupling constant, as is of, uh, always the yeah. case for open string cross string. Right. And uh, then t is the parameter of the string theory. Now, since we are fixing t as a parameter of uh, cross string wall sheet, Good. so you could have said that uh, you could have normalized this into here. And you are saying that we are expanding 1 over n to the 2g minus 2. That's uh, the uh, same thing. OK, and so you have singular contributions in that, exp in that expansion. Singular uh, contribution saying. for fixed, for, for, for each order in 1 over n expansion, but small to fifth coupling. If you are referring to okay. the, um, our yeah, result in the last transparency right. here, yes. for example, then we are looking at a small to fifth coupling for fixed order in g that is for fixed order in one over n expansion. Okay. I, well, I'm looking, oh, okay. We'll discuss it later. 